Hello, and welcome to my 600th video. <laughs> Today, we're going to be doing a watercolor landscape painting. Um, I'm going to do a scene from memory, but I'll put a darkroom print that I did of some film photography on the side of it. I will set up the palette while I talk about the paper and the materials, and then we'll get to it and have fun. Um, Color-wise, I don't have a specific uh, colors in mind just yet. We'll go with the flow, go for the dark tonalism, and have fun. I am using a quarter sheet Stonehenge Aqua, 140 pound cold press, and 100% cotton, and I thoroughly coated it with water. I'll probably wind up passing around uh, some more water again in a moment. And that being said, the scene is going to be, it's actually like a few blocks away from my house. It's outside of what's called the Old Riverfront, where uh, it was a restaurant that they still kind of cater and do events at. But whenever I first started teaching down here, on Fridays, a lot of the teachers would go there um, and get food, etc. you know, and hang out on the river by the old drawbridge and, um, you know, just hang out and relax. I now use that spot a lot. I'll go there and I'll test out some film photography. I'll paint the scene a lot, usually for memory. And, uh, yeah, so it just kind of, I guess, holds a special place in my art world. I was it was recommended to me whenever I did my first farmer's market to to paint the scene, to paint something local. And I had painted it and I sent a picture to my father and I asked him if he recognized it and he said, Yeah, you know the old drawbridge. And he's like, I, I want it. And I'm like, well, I was painting it, you know, for display and for marketability. <laughs> but yeah, you can have it. So then from there I painted the scene uh, again and again, and whatever local charities, uh, organizations would have raffles or sales, I'd paint the scene and I would donate that scene. Um, it even, one donation, we had uh, done a large print of it and put a cypress frame around it, and it pulled in $500 at a charity auction. So. And that's been really, really cool. All right, I'm gonna grab some raw sienna. I'm using the medium hake brush. The paper is nice and coated. I'm gonna establish my horizon line. Even though I've photographed this scene quite a bit, I believe I've started to distort the location of everything whenever I paint it. You are more than welcome to follow along. And like I said, I'll put a picture of a black and white print right there. And maybe it'll give you some insight into how I paint and how I distill the scene. That's a phrase, a book title, used by Ron Ranson. Working from a photograph, cutting out what he wanted adding in what he wanted. There's some burnt umber. This will all be a tree line in here. We'll have the reflections coming down. We'll probably scrape some rocks. I totally neglected putting any blue in the sky. I think I'll continue along that path of no blue. Maybe in the end we'll put a bright spot. Uh, as the paper absorbs water and buckles, I just press down on the binder clips and I use the back of the brush so that I'm not getting my hands on the paper. 
The reason I avoid putting my hands on it is oils from the hand can cause areas of resist. And if you have a big old beard like me, there's a lot of beard oil. And if you have a big old beard, make sure you're washing it and putting oil in it, moisturizing it. Here's some Payne's Gray. I don't know if I mentioned, but today is April Fool's Day. It's the 1st of April. And it's time for me to film the state of the art address. A monthly or quarterly filming that I want to do, talking about what has been filmed and uploaded and plans for the month. Just a little fun extra approach but I didn't want that to be my 600th video I feel like this scene is more special and more important I'm using the Payne's Gray to darken the underside of where the bridge will be and it's a drawbridge just marking out spots as should I should find out the name of the type of structure and what these parts are called but essentially there's a heavy weight and it'll drop down and lift up this top spot it'll bring down its reflection and its reflection the church, St. Mary Magdalene Church, will go about here. Um, I'm going to avoid putting it in wet and wet because of how thin it'll wind up being. It'll just bleed too much. But I can get its reflection in place. And they have an old restaurant called Black's right here. I photographed that quite a bit. And then closer to us is a car place, automotive, right in this location. And then alongside is a restaurant called Dupuis. Right in the water in this location, it's actually, it's pretty cool. Um, since they sell oysters and all that stuff, they dump all the shells right there. And there's just piles of oyster shells in that location. There's going to be power lines here, and we'll have our trees back here. I know this is a little stuffy. Sorry about that. Bring out some highlights. I'm going to grab some burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna. In the beginning, when I was painting, I was using it a lot. I was watching. Um, Rick S, a painter on YouTube, and he makes fantastic use of burnt sienna and ultramarine going back and forth, uh, creating the darks, going cool, going light. And that was very, very influential on me when I had started painting. And then I was watching a lot of. Stephen Cronin and David Usher. They have a very similar palette, the, the Ron Ranson palette. And if they use burnt sienna, I'm not quite sure, but they were looser painters than uh, Rick S. What we'll do is the different scraping tools. He said that here will be the church. Here will be the one location. We'll scrape out the other location just to start forming the spot. 
and we'll play around on top. This large piece was sent by a fellow YouTuber and we've been talking about potentially doing a giveaway of these pieces, these scraping tools, if anybody is interested in that. But I'll talk about that in um, the state of the art address. Sorry, I'm sniffling. Right along this edge is where I want my rocks to be. I'm not going too hard with the scraping. I don't want to do too much damage to the paper at the moment. So kind of mapping everything out. Underneath the structural pieces, there's the pillar underneath, and then there's um, some wood that I guess if a boat was to come in and hit that, they would hit that first. those ideas in place. I don't know if I mentioned, but I think nowadays a big shipping for the uh, the river, the Vermilion River, I think a lot of it is um, stone, I guess for driveways and concrete and other things. And in town, if you were to head down the river south, there's, I don't know if the bridge is still there, but there was a, um, a rice mill, and there still is, and the bridge would then go with the railroad tracks to the town over, which has the rice mill still, but it's derelict. I know that one's just not in use anymore. I'm sure rice was shipped up the river or down the river in the past. I'm loving the granulation that I'm getting in some of these spots. That's why I haven't touched the sky at all. Just letting it go naturally. And we're still wet and wet, just playing around. There's a little operating booth right here. And then actually behind it, there's um, a realtor and there might be a law firm right there. I think this town I was born down here but I didn't grow up down here. I'm gonna grab more paints gray. Get a little bit more stricter or a little bit more mark making, even though we're still wet and wet. There also used to be a dairy somewhere in town. I'll have to ask about that. There are a lot of people that still have cows, but um, mainly for for food purposes. I don't like the way that is going. Let's go up here. Now there are signs on the bridge. I think it says like call in advance to get it raised. Um, probably some other signs. In fact, in a darkroom print, that was like something I was using as a guesstimate of what would be my pure white in the print. But I'm extremely am amateur with printing. Get a little texture in for the rocks. I'm going to put trees in on top. Probably should put some wet and wet foliage. I 
And I'm just using Payne's Gray. Wet and wet, let it diffuse. And I won't forget about the church. You could, you could actually see, probably in the picture you can't, I think I'm at more of an angle, but the, um, the body of the church, I'm not sure what it would be called. You have the big front of it, and then you have the receding pieces. You can see that from this location, I believe, but I'll probably omit that. Yeah, Hammy. Hammy's asking why. Yeah, I don't know. So, dude. All right, I'm going to pause and we'll do a dry off. And this will be a great time for us to see how things soften up as they dry. All right, so we did our dry off. I have some softening taking place. Some places feel a little cool still, so it might be a little damp, but good enough. Um, you can see where we went wet and wet with structural pieces, how it diffused. Um, so that might be something if you were to follow along, you may want to experiment with putting it in and then you want to experiment with leaving it out and seeing what you prefer. If that step, if you enjoyed it or not in the final results. And you'll probably see why I left it out with the church. You might want to experiment with adding it in with the church or in your own scene. I'm using the number four rigger, this is the um, silver black velvet. It just holds more pigment than the number one that I use as well. Do have just a small selection of brushes that I use in a video um, while I play around a little bit kind of talk about that um, the hake brush I've worn it out I've used it for a long time and that's why it is the way it is and you know I really love it but with watercolor, you can find a whole variety of different types of brushes and you know, find something that works for you in that large regard. You don't always have to go hake brush, you can play around with um, you know, a large flat, you could play around with squirrel mops. What other large brushes are there? The oval flat, squirrel, you know, find one that you like. Because inevitably, a large majority of people, well, no, I'm just <laughs> taking myself as an example and then spreading it out over everybody, is you'll read about limited palettes limited number of tools so that you're not all over the place and that you have limited restriction and it kind of takes out the guesswork. Meaning if you have two blues on your palette, you might be debating which blue to use for a certain location. If you only have one, you're then restricting yourself, but that restriction prevents you from spending all that time trying to figure out which blue exactly and allows you to just have fun and paint. So you'll hear that a lot. And then from there you'll play around and you'll paint, but you'll inevitably inevitably want to experiment and have fun and play with different paints, different brushes. It is kind of curving a little bit there. And we'll come back to it. Here's just the ropes, the wires, the cables, the pulleys. I wonder if they show up in the photograph. I 
And I wonder what spots and shapes I just wind up making up. Let's grab some ultramarine blue and a little bit of light red oxide for a distant purple. And I'm going to use this for the uh, steeple. So I want to make sure it's nice and vertical. the sides I could feel where the the heel of my hand or the paper is still damp if you don't like of course you can lift with paper towel play around I'm going a little lopsided just going to try to correct that. This will be where the clock face will be. And the sides. Take a little bit darker pigment. Just feed it in for a little bit. Variation. And that hopefully should suffice. There we go bringing that down here okay moving away from that I'm just gonna grab some burnt umber some Payne's gray put in some foliage and I tried anticipating their reflection in the wet and wet stage but horizontal strokes will help create that receding two-dimensional plane of the water. And once we put that there, it's now wet again and I can feed in. This is Payne's Gray. That horizontal plane, I think I picked that up from Eric Kopel, a really, really good um, tonalist, well, Hudson River Valley, um, modern Hudson River Valley painter. He had a free hour or two of one of his videos up for a holiday for people to watch. Um, he sells his DVDs and I believe that little tidbit was in there Let's darken our shadows or reflections I'm gonna grab the number one rigger. Maybe more trees along this edge. They're specific, unique shadows. One thing I haven't quoted in a while, I don't remember where I had heard it or read it I'll put three vertical lines in for power poles and while I do this I'll mention it with water and reflections the reading was pretty much saying don't do perfect reflections because you wind up creating two paintings in one image and it becomes uh, difficult to view. Of course, there's you know exceptions to every rule, but I thought 
thought it was a good one, an important one. I think we'll do a dry off in a moment and see where we're at. Let's see if I can get some scrapes in for the raw, uh, the wood barrier that I was telling you about. All right, I'm gonna do a pause and we'll do a dry off. All right, we're 25 minutes in. Uh, we're pretty dried off. I'm gonna fiddle a little bit for about four more minutes. We'll try to restrict us to that. Grab some burnt umber. Um, that's a few things to point out. To quote, Joe Menza, he says, whenever you feel like you're looking for things to add, that's the time to stop. So if you ever feel like you're unsure what to do, at that point, that's a good time to stop. For me, with this one, I liked the loose feel of these brush marks in these areas. But I wanted to try to tie it together a little bit more and see what happened. My anticipation is, I'm anticipating those spots to dry lighter that I just marked in. But I think those marks will be pretty interesting. A little bit of side dry brush effect. Technique I picked up from David Usher videos. Alan Owen is the master of using the side brush and just making that quick mark. And just, it looks easy, but it is not. I am definitely not proficient in that approach. I appreciate you watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed my 600th video. In a moment, I'll do a, one last dry off and we'll see. If you want to support this channel, I have a whole bunch of links down below. I have the Patreon where I have some exclusive content up there. We do some Patreon early access and other fun stuff. I do have other means of donating if you'd like. Liking and subscribing and commenting is a great way to help this channel grow. And letting me know what you'd like to see. You know what? We'll do our kind of a dark sideways. There we go. depth. I love just the loose gestural marks that you can make. The calligraphy type marks you can make with the uh, riggers, they're just fantastic. Put that up a little bit more. Some last minute big changes. Well, not big changes, but, you know, big change for a last minute. The scene, we could easily pull out. Actually, you know what we do? Okay, we'll do a big change. I am going to grab... Let me pause the camera so you can see it. All right, I bought a pack of these off of Amazon two or three years ago, and I've been using them. I just have so many of them. It's the Magic Eraser. Uh, it's pretty much melanin foam. Melanin foam is just an abrasive. There's no chemicals within it. I'm looking for a cutting tool. Let's use this scissor right here. And we'll use it to show how you can scrub back. And what I'm thinking is, 
it'll be a great way to add a moon kind of get a nocturne type feel you could also argue that it is the sun on a very hazy day and I just wet it a little bit and scrub in and it erases it, pretty much I think it's just doing um, sanding on a very fine level I don't think you're supposed to use melanin foam to clean food prod uh, things that you're gonna prepare food in because there's probably a slight um, abrasions or pieces of the particles in it all right let's pause it and we'll dry it off well that was a lot of fun and I really hope you enjoyed this wraps up my 600th video here's to 600 more should I put 600 on this yeah we'll just put 600 just you know people ask what that means I can tell them all right I hope you enjoyed uh have a great weekend everybody stay safe and y'all take care bye